it's a breaking story that is five, six years in the making. And you think of everybody's neighbors getting along, but when they don't, especially in a city as litigious as Washington, oh my goodness, they don't. And you would think it would be over something like truly catastrophic, right? Something absolutely huge, but it's about 20 inches. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. This family on Capitol Hill had two little daughters. They were three and five and they decided to uh, five, this is five years ago to build a tree house for them. And, um, you know, they spent some money, built it, uh, in their backyard and it sort of became a neighborhood fixture. Now, the father is an attorney, so he did do his due diligence and looked up uh, what are the codes and regulations for building a tree house? Does he need to get a permit in D.C.? Apparently, there was none. Built the tree house, and a lot of these neighborhoods in Capitol Hill don't have like a backyard or really a front yard. They're really just like stacked one on top of each other. And so people use the alleyway for like a common area. Not a lot of cars go back and forth in there. There's not garages back there. They, they put planters and benches and, you know, kids riding bicycles and that type of thing. Well, the tree house apparently went 20 inches over into the alleyway, which is the first problem. And it became just sort of an issue. Some neighbors loved it. Some neighbors hated it. It was clearly in public space. So uh, lawsuits were filed all over the place to take this tree house down over the course of five <laughs> years. It got so much to the point where the family who had the tree house claimed that um, DDOT, which is the, the w jurisdiction fell under DDOT because it was in an alleyway. Oh, in a in thoroughfare, the old department of yep, transportation yep, game. Yep, ah. um, that they hacked into their uh, city zoning account. And so they reported them to the FBI because it was a federal computer fraud and an abuse. And wait, fought. wait, hang on. The family reported the DDOT or DDOT reported the family? The family reported that DDOT <laughs> hacked into their zoning account without their knowledge. Oh, yeah. I mean, and literally they filed it with the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center. Now, I do have to give a shout out. This was in the Washington Post today. Uh, all the all the uh, details of this like extremely... Um, complicated case and i'm only kind of giving you the highlights yeah dana hedgepleth has the article it's incredible <laughs> it's um, incredible but the reason why we're talking about it is because they came to settlement with a mediator oh <laughs> the treehouse has to come down in 2024 the girls will be teenagers that they by the time that comes down um and they uh took away the fines that the family no either neither side has committed or has admitted to any wrongdoing BTW. Wait, so they just take it down, no harm, no foul, in 2024 when the kids are adults? Yeah. Well, the kids will be teenagers and probably won't fit into this treehouse or want to go into it. So the family won, basically. Uh, yes. In theory, yes, they did. Um, now, a certified arborist must come and oversee the removal of the treehouse. I don't know who's paying for that. Oh, the arborist. People <laughs> in D.C. love their trees, man. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, and there's, a, you know, there, we're showing some photos of this treehouse. There's some people in the neighborhood that, like, gave donations to help save it and for legal <laughs> fees. But five years in the making. Wow. Wow. Imagine though, too, if you're the FBI agent who like goes through FBI school and like gets all your training and you're like, all right, I'm on the internet crimes desk. Let's bust some bad guys. And then they're like, here, can you check out DDOT and make sure they didn't hack into this family's treehouse account? Well, according to the Washington Post, the FBI never responded about the claim. Got it. That would make sense. <laughs> the FBI is like, uh, open the newspaper. We're busy. <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> <laughs> but it, you know like typical attorney style like uh -huh. to even think about like okay i think they hacked in so where would i report that yes the fbi and apparently like i mean unfortunately or fortunately however you want to look at it this was something that was in front of like you know the neighborhood council and there was shouting and screaming when we used to be able to gather i mean this has been a developing story for five years i mean i, I don't imagine a movie in the making we're get so um in my neighborhood um mount vernon triangle i live a couple blocks away from cobb park which is a park that's going to be um you know reinstituted and, and reinvigorated and it's going to be awesome but i've been to some of those community meetings over cobb park and oh my goodness like anger on all sides anti-park 
pro park and the people who are pro park are like, well, what kind of trees are going to be on the park? Is there going to be water fixtures in the park? Are there going to be girls in the park? Are there going to be benches or fences? Or how do we make sure the park is going to be safe? Is there going to be bouncy um, turf or like hard turf? Is there going to be a dog park? Or like, I can only imagine what like something as heated as a thing that appeared versus like an ethereal thing. We're all building together that we're all helping to get to. Right. <laughs> wow. Remember the um, dog park in Chevy chase. Yes. Was, with too thing. much barking. Yeah. Now Chevy chase has like, I think every other household has an attorney in the house. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it was pretty litigious there too. Either in the family or on retainer just for fun. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> so wow. these issues can get pretty heated. Can we also, as long as we're being like super local about this, like, my goodness, the people who run and become the ANC people who have to deal with this stuff on the front lines, like, good for them. I mean, I don't think they get paid at all, right? Or they get paid very little to do it. I don't know. Mine lives right across the street from me. And I, I will email her, like, the dumbest questions. And she she's so thoughtful and thorough, like, sends me these long emails citing all sorts of zoning and codes and stuff. I, I don't know. I, I hope they get paid. I hope they get paid. I, like, at the recent election, there was, like, five people running for it in my neighborhood. And I was like... Good for you. Like, wait, wait, <laughs> get it. That's awesome. Right. If you want to deal with that crap, good luck. That's so great. Like, way to go. I got to figure out how much they get paid, if they get paid at all. Because if they don't get paid at all, someone should, like, I don't know, give them a fruitcake I mean, this holiday season. They are choosing to do it. It's not like they're being drafted to do it. Right, because they have, like, a real, like, a real, like, um, we have sense to of wanting to help out their neighbors. I know I just got a question from Doug and Ashburn about ANC on Facebook, what it means. I'm not sure what it means. I'm looking up it, right it's, now. It's something neighborhood commission. It's like your local, it's an elected position in DC, each neighborhood within each ward. And there's eight of them. They break down into separate um, neighborhoods. And that's like your neighborhood commission representative. That's why mine lives like literally across the street. Advisory neighborhood commissioner. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Doug, they don't have a lot of those in Ashburn. Well, they have, I guess the difference would be they have like the state senators and state representatives that kind of drill down into more local areas. We don't have those. Oh, is that what that would be? Okay, so this is the map of the ANC in the district. So there's like ANC three and then letter. So it's like the ward that I, you're I'm, in yeah, and I'm the in letter you're three, in. Yeah, I'm three and I believe I'm in B. So I'm ward three B is my ANC. Got it. Yeah. So that's how, that's how it's all broken up. Is that how that would work? So that's how like the state senators and representatives and stuff would be. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, a little bit, I guess the representatives would probably be closer to um, the ward council member. Hmm. So I don't know. Or would they be like the congressional um, members also to that fact? Um, Oddly enough, I had like a real deep thought about that the other day. It's funny we're talking about this because I was like, when DC becomes a state, we're going to have to have like a state senate and like state representatives. It's going to be like a lot of like, where are we going to put them all? <laughs> we have to have like an auditorium or a gymnasium or something to house those meetings. I don't know why that popped in my head. <laughs> Is that before or after you changed the uh, daylight savings rule about dc until it becomes a state oh and i'm still sticking with that i okay. think we should not change the clocks i think we should have not fallen back until we become a state because when dc is a different time zone than maryland and virginia for half of the year it's going to grind this place to more of a halt than it already is <laughs> and then that's when <laughs> that's when things get changed or it's like a toddler like refusing to eat their vegetables basically yeah great sounds awesome <laughs> I'm just saying is all when you're working on DC time for half of the year, pfft, good luck. <laughs> I don't I don't even think Siri can figure that one out in real time. Yeah.